All these tattoos on my body, cause you know where I'm from. You see me out in public, don't get done. That's why oh, yeah. I, I need to I need to get y'all on there in my generation and all of us, you know, to talk about how it was for us to go in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And not being such a big hood and being from Pomona. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I used to get tired. Hey, I used to get tired of going to that motherfucker talking about where you from. I'm from Pomona. Are you from Sentown? Nah, yeah. I'm from Southside Village. Uh, Fuck me. You know right. what I'm saying? So right. yeah, we had to pave the way, you know, and 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 exactly all, all through the county jails, crip modules, uh, uh, lost Petrinos, juvenile halls, and shit from day one, right. you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, but it I... took motherfuckers like us, Yo Yo Pope Loke, you KJ, homies that was going through the behind the walls and shit, you know. Yeah, uh, King Real, that's my homie, Die Hard, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? White dude from our hood, bang that shit. Harder than a lot of motherfuckers from my neighborhood bang that shit. You know what I'm saying? He did like uh 20 something years um going through a, a a a hot one case, man, and going through the county jail and being white representing a black neighborhood. Um so yeah, he went through he went through a lot. He got a hell of a story, man. I'm gonna have to get him on there. And you went on your own at what age? I would say I was, a, I was completely on my own around 14, 15. Yeah, and you joined the gang? Yeah, I joined the gang early, about 13. But I was completely on my own, separated from, I was on the streets 14, 15. So you joined which gang? Uh, Pasadena, Denver, and Blood. So you're Blood? Yes, sir. You're a white, you're Caucasian. Very much so. And you're in a, in a totally black gang? Yes, sir. How was that? Um, it's being that I was growing up in the 90s when it was really the gang banging that you see nowadays is not the gang banging that gang banging is. It's now you're getting a what you would say a um, placebo of gang banging. Nineties it was more hands on, so it was a little rough for me being white um, for a black gang. Had to prove myself to the blacks. Had to defend myself from whites and Mexicans, so it was rough for me not. You've done prison time. Yes, sir. Thirteen years. Um, I spent from 21 to 33 in prison. Um, I was stabbed 10 times in prison, but... Is it hard being, you know, being in prison and being white, mm -hmm. even though you were a, bl a blood gang? How, how was that? Uh, that's not, that's 13 years of war. That's, um, every tattoo I on my body is from the penitentiary. Um, White boys don't like it too much, but my theory was I wasn't that way on the street, so why am I going to be that way in prison? Um, the whole factor of me being from my neighborhood is me being from my neighborhood. I mean, what do I look like going to prison and letting this white boy tell me if I don't obey what he's talking about, then I'm going to get hurt. So I chose to go with my homies and I got stabbed in my stomach, my uh, armpit, slice my arm, slice my neck. Just over the course of years, right? State your name and your hood, my man. I'm Super Cuz. I'm from Stockton, East Coast Crips. But I bang all of them, First Street to 2400 block. Now, in your own words, you said you crip walked through six prison systems. Talk to me about... Uh, your first prison stint? Ended up, I ended up in DVI at the reception center. I had to make hard choices. I'm either going to crip, or I'm going to get what I've been doing on, or I, I just really couldn't see me siding with the woods. I didn't know how to do none of that. So, um, as I was saying, I, I get to uh, Tracy. I made my decision. I'm doing my cripping. I had to put hands on a couple white boys there, but not really too bad because there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of crips from Stockton okay. there that was backing me up. So it wasn't a lot of real problems. I had one situation in the shower with a dude that talked too much. So we ended up with a bar soap in his mouth and knocked out. And, and, and from there, they kind of understood that, you know, I wasn't no softy mm -hmm. and I was built for this shit. And
first and foremost, man, what they call you, where you from, homie? Uh, my name is j Doll. used to be, <laughs> and I was from uh, Villain, uh, Blood Gang. Uh, I also was gang related wherever I went. I had a lot of ties in LA and even as far back in Chicago. Anybody told a red rag, man. Okay, okay. So, uh, villain, uh, Fresno, right? That's yeah, Fresno. Yeah. Um, this was my first Sully in the main line. Uh, uh, yeah, he educated me in a lot of ways that I needed to be educated as a guy coming fresh into prison, and I salute him for that. I, re- I appreciate it. He knows how I feel. Uh, and when he and now that I can say it, since we exposed it, when he's talking about them hands, yeah, he ain't lying. He ain't lying. Brett do his stuff, man. Uh, I'm Ghost Capone from Graveyard Gangsters. You don't have to be a tough guy to to be stupid and go do some dumb shit, you know? Let me, let me ask you something. How did you connect with these, these, these graveyard guys? What's, what's the backstory behind your relationship with these guys? Well, I mean, I grew up in Santa Monica. You know, playing sports. You know, like I said, most most athletes are usually black, um, and the SAs really didn't like that shit. And they make you choose. You know, if we're all hanging out as friends before gangbang. We're just kids hanging out, walking home from a party, and then they all come out of apartment with bats and shit. You know, fuck the N word, all this. It doesn't matter if I'm white or not. I'm there. They're gonna get me too. You know, so. I just chose, you know, not to run. I tried to avoid it for a long time. Lil Nut used to beg me to be from the Please, just please, cause, you know, and I'd be like, nah, I don't want to do it. But it just eventually, you know, I got stabbed a gang of times. One time they jumped me and stabbed me a gang of times. And, and it just kind of went from there, you know, after that. First off, let me just get this out the way. You're a white crip from California, correct? Yeah, I mean, I, man, you know what? If you've ever met any white crips from, man, and that's just ugly coming out of my mouth, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, yeah. That's I such, understand, that, I understand. That's such a generic term, bro. Exactly. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, so I, I'm a crip. I'll put it to you like this. I'm a crip from a neighborhood in San Diego, and I, and I happen to be white, so... Correct. You can call me what you want to call me, but you know, keep a respect there. Uh, Juno Hall, the camp, and then uh, during this time, I, I would hear about, oh man, you know, oh, you a white crib? Yeah, make sure you get yourself cleaned up before you turn 18, because you turn 18, you go to prison as a white crib. They, get, meaning get they want, meaning you should just stop doing it when they say stop. clean up? <laughs> yeah, just stop doing it. Get yourself right, man, because you're going to yeah. go up there and it's going to be a whole different ball game. Who would? Uh-huh. There's an older, there's an older white crib uh, from San Diego, the homie Snow Rock, and uh, he he paved the way, bro. And uh, I mean, he, you know, he, I mean, he hit the yard and and, and, and it was on and cracking, and he wasn't chucking his. Well, tail you, what, when you say he paved the way, was he like one of the maybe one of the one first of the... white cribs, you know, that that, uh, that actually hit the. Oh that, shit! Been in Cali as far as being a white crib. Well, if you ever. So I'm out there. And uh, luckily, I get put into a module that has a gang of homie, crib homies from San Diego in it. And uh, my schooling begins, bro. I mean, did uh, you tell the COs, hey, I'm crip, man? Oh, yeah. I mean, because when, when you come in, they yeah. basically they ask you your race, your name, uh, you know, they, what race, who do you run with? And I told them, I said, yeah, I'm from Linda Vista Crib. And the dude looks at me like, oh, all right. He just kind of like, you know, like, Oh, this is going to be interesting. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had a few white boys from the hood. And like we got another little young homie, white boy T. He in the PM yeah, yeah. right now. I was in PM with T. Yeah, white boy T. That's too. what Jack be trying to get out of Yeah, yeah. We had white, we had booby now, it was white. We had white boy Greg. Now, white boy Greg lived right down the street from me. Yeah, he's right About there. five hours from me, yeah. Is he? Somebody said he had a stroke. He did. Mm-hmm. But he all right. He okay. I see him damn near every day. We had a white boy back in the day named White Boy Dean. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that motherfucker. He, he, he reminded me of Goldie from Park Village. 
D was off the hook. D was ready. Say Goldie was a rider from Park Village. Yeah, I know Goldie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah without a doubt. That you know what I'm silly. saying? Yeah. <laughs> That was about silly. Yeah. But he left Lancaster before he caught that case. Goldie was with it. My mama thought he was black. Because I told him to take my transcript to the house. And uh, my mama said, Yo, silly about the And she always already assumed he was black because he in the cell with me. Yeah. And then uh, my little sister, Nerys, liked him. And I'm like, You know he white, Nerys, right? She said, He ain't. I said, Man, that motherfucker white is all I can. I also wanted to ask you about too, man, is uh, because you you had mentioned a couple of times that you had been around on yards and, and there were white crips or white bloods pulled up and it was automatically uh, a racial fight or mm -hmm. a racial problem, this and that. You know, well, when I came to Ironwood, you know, mm -hmm. when I in, uh, ended up coming to Sea Yard, you guys was already over there. The right. car was well established, 20, 25, 20 something homies, and we had a white homie over there from my hood, yeah, by the name of Pee Wee, right? And so. What happened because he never got fucked with? What was what was the so watch this though, right? When people first come, right, they got even orientation, but I'm in the cell. Easy is out, right? So easy, you know what I'm saying, go up there and go holla at it, right? So easy come down. I'm like, man, it's a white boy up here talking about he know your whole family, right? Yeah. I'm like, man, what are you talking about? Right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm not even thinking about Pee Wee, right? You know what I'm saying? So I go up there and Boom, it's Pee Wee. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know each other. And we, yeah, right. all that, right? You know what I'm saying? So I go back down there. I tell, I tell Easy, I'm like, hey, man, that's the homie. You know what I'm saying? He a crib man. He from Bannon, right? You know what I'm saying? He said, so you say, man, it's going to be a problem. I say, Easy, I'm not going to let nothing happen to him, right? I had a saying, man, not on my watch. I'm telling Easy, I'm like, hey, man, you can go holler at these white boys, man. Let them know. You know what I'm saying? We not, we not taking this, right? So he go over there and let them know. So first, they like, nah. He got to go or we are we taking off right i say man go back over there right there's a white boy named toker i said man go back oh he had a big ass swastika on his back i said go back over there you tell him man i'm gonna turn that motherfucker to a bullseye yeah right <laughs> if he touched my home boy i'm fucking him up right <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so easy go back over there i don't know if he told him that or not but this right. is what i'm telling easy right right, right. so i'm so he go back over there he come back he say hey man he's straight Honey. Yes. Honey, uh, where'd you grow up? Where, where are you from originally? I'm from Compton, and California. You, yep. Do you have any contact with your family at all? No. When's the last time you spoke to your parents? They're, they're dead. They're dead? Mm -hmm. How'd you lose your parents? Uh, my, my dad got shot because my dad was affiliated and my mom, she died of natural causes. So your dad, when you say affiliated, that means he was in... He was a gang member. Gang member? Is he Mexican? Black. Black. So your dad is, is black? Yes. He's my stepdad. Stepdad, okay. Yeah. So you're picking up guys. How, how often do you do that? Every day. Every day? But nobody gives you a hard time? They do. That's what, that's what I'm talking about, stories. like what, what kind of bad things have happened to you? Well, basically, there was this one trick that I did, and he took me to his hotel room, and basically, he forced me to have sex with him. And when I tried to run off, he grabbed me by my hair and started hitting me in my face. And I had to call one of my homeboys from my set to come and pick me up. And my homeboy's locked up right now because he... Smashed his head in with the hammer. Did he kill him or he just? He killed him. My homeboy's doing life right now. Do you have any friends, honey? No. Anybody you trust in your life? Yeah, people from my set. Your set being your gang? Yeah, my gang. And your gang is a. A black gang, a Hispanic gang? Black. Black gang. 
In Compton? Nah. Swan family blood. Well, I'm Joey. Uh, most people know me by Snow Rock, neighborhood crip. But by the time I turned, you know what I'm saying, like 14 and 15, that's when I was getting initiated. And initiation for me was a little bit different because I was the only white boy. So whenever the guys were bored, it was time to pick on the white boy. So I got jumped in more than 20 times. <laughs> you know, just because there was nothing else for the guys to do. Yeah. So, but it was an evolution because White Boy Joey got tired of getting picked on, pushed around, beat up, and his stuff taken. So Snow Rock had to, be, had to evolve to stop that. And Snow Rock got so vicious to where, you know, I was 14, 15 years old fighting grown men. Because later on when I went to prison, I had to go through a whole different uh, uh, arena of, of bullshit, and if I wouldn't have went through the shit that they put me through, I probably wouldn't have survived all the stuff I had to go through. But when I got sentenced to prison, my dad came to visit me, and he told me, boy, you can't go to prison gangbanging. And I was like, I, I ain't gonna change now. You know, I was hard-headed, young, dumb, full of calm, and I'm like, shit, I could do anything. And I had even homies from my neighborhood was like, man, you can't go, you can't go up in there, you know what I'm saying, you know, Gang bang and just go with the whites and tell them you don't bang. And I'm like, man, fuck that. You know what I mean? You yeah, know, yeah. I, I, I came in this way. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to leave out this way, one way or another. 